So now that we've been introduced to the pattern pens, let's go ahead and take a closer look at them because there's actually quite a lot to understand about how they work. So to begin with, I'm gonna change my pattern from this pattern that I've just created the primitive over to this decorative ginkgo pen because it's gonna be a pretty good pattern to sort of demonstrate the various different ways that the pattern pens can work. The other thing I wanna do is open up my color palette here because I wanna be able to change my main color because an awful lot of what we're gonna be doing here is going to be dependent upon whatever the main color is. So we're just gonna come, come over here to our pattern pens and if you're not there, make sure you go to the pattern pen category. We're just gonna start with the pattern pen. Now, the main idea with the pattern pen is that it's just simply gonna take the pattern that we have here and it's going to apply that as a flat pattern fill over a rendered brushstroke. Now, how do I know it's a rendered brushstroke? Well, if we come to Window and we go to the Brush Control Panels and we choose General, you'll see that it is, in fact, a dab type of rendered. Now, this is no different than our Grad Pen or our Grad Repeat Pen. And if we come over here under Source, you'll see there's Gradient and gradient repeat like we looked at previously, but now we're gonna be looking at pattern, pattern with mask, and pattern as opacity. Now, the interesting thing to know about this particular brush is that it's also using a dab profile of one pixel edge. And what this means is that we're gonna be getting a very, very hard edge to this. If we were to switch over from pattern pen to pattern pen soft edge, you'll see that the brush profile changes to dull profile, and now if we were to go ahead and click and drag, you'll see that we end up with a soft edge instead of a hard edge. So the dab profile does have a big impact on the pattern pen stroke that's created. Now, that said, the other thing that I wanna point out to you is that this is our nib file. Remember we were talking about when we created custom brushes that we were gonna have a nib file and a stroke file? Well, there's our nib file and there's our stroke file. These are basically previews to show us what actually makes this brush in terms of the preview, and also in terms of the way that it's gonna look when we draw it out. So that's just something interesting to bear in mind. You'll notice here that we're using the exact same source type of pattern. So if we were to change over to say something like the pattern pen masked, now you're gonna see that the source type changes to pattern pen with mask. And now it's gonna use that selection that we made when we were creating the patterns. Now. This one already comes that way, but if you were to make a pattern, all you would need to do is do it on a layer and then do the layer drop and select command to make sure that you have a selection before you capture the pattern. And then you'll get this type of result where all that background information is cut away. And instead what you're left with is simply just the part of the pattern that was selected. Now, if we come up here and we choose something like pattern pen micro, this is basically the exact same thing, just a much smaller brush size. If we were to do something like say the pattern pen transparent, then what we're gonna be getting is the exact same thing, but this time we're getting lower opacity and therefore we're getting sort of this transparent quality of the pattern. And so all these basically use the information that's contained in the pattern in different ways, meaning smaller, bigger, transparency, soft edges, hard edges. These ones that are above are a whole different breed. If we come to pattern chalk, you'll see that our type of source here changes from the pattern or pattern with mask to pattern as opacity. And when we change from the other two to pattern as opacity, we are allowed to access the method and the subcategory. And basically what this does is it opens up a whole world of creative possibilities for working with patterns. Because now we're able to apply actual media, things like chalk, marker, watercolor, you name it. All of their different types of media that are available to us within Corel Painter are generally stuff that we can access by using different methods and different subcategories. Now we'll come back and look at all these at a later date when we're getting into the brush settings, but I just wanted to point out to you that these are a whole different thing because they no longer use your pattern information except as opacity and also value. So let's just go ahead and use the spacebar to move over a little bit. And I'm gonna change my main color from black to a color. So I'm just gonna pick something like say red, for instance. And I'm gonna go ahead now and just draw out with the pattern chalk. And I can keep doing this over and over again. And you'll see that it doesn't ever really get darker. It just simply kind of covers up whatever's underneath. This is why it's the method of cover. And it's soft cover because it's going to be giving us this sort of soft, sort of pastel -y or chalky look. Now we can change that. And of course, if we change our main color, by the way, it's going to start with whatever was the color that was underneath where you began your click. And it's going to fade into that full on main color in a very pastel -y or chalky way. So 
very useful. However, if we were to change to something like, say, the pattern marker, we're still using the pattern as opacity, but now we're using the method of buildup and a subcategory of soft variable buildup. And what this means is we can now build up to darker and darker color as we keep stroking. And this will become really apparent when we use a slightly darker color like so, that we can eventually build up to a black color by using this buildup method. So it's very different from the cover method in that sense. We also have down here the pattern marker grad color. And basically what this does is it does the exact same thing with a slightly different subcategory. And if I just come over here and move over a bit and pull this out, you can see that we're in it with more or less the same thing. However, you're gonna see that some of my strokes are gonna be lighter than others. This is not because I'm pressing lighter, but instead, if you look at our main color here, you can see that it's changed. It's got this sort of multicolor thing going on. What's that all about? Well, because this particular one, as the name might imply, is accessing the gradient, and the current gradient is going to be two point. However, we don't necessarily want two point here because we want to be able to see what these gradients do. So I'm going to pick something like, say, oh, our orange flame. So you can see here we're going from blue through yellow all the way up to orange in this one. So if I begin to start clicking and dragging, you'll see that I'm getting different parts of that gradient each time I'm stroking. And this just gives us variability, but gives us variability within a very specific set of colors. Now, how is it accessing that? Well, if we go ahead and just collapse general and open color variability, you'll see that the color variability has changed from NHSV to from gradient. And that's allowing us to access the colors of the gradient. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the various different ways that you can customize any of these pattern pens and create your own variations on them. They are tremendously, tremendously powerful. Now, that said, some of my favorite types, and I'll just go ahead and just move this over real quick. It was getting kind of out of place on me. So we'll just go ahead and collapse that, collapse that real quick. And let's come back over here real quick to our swirls. Swirls is a really fun pattern for doing these types of things. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just pull with the patterns over. And you can see that by layering these up in various methods, whether it be the, the marker or the chalk, we can now create some very interesting pastel and marker type overlays that can be really, really fun for abstract art and whatnot. And let me show you a piece of art that I created in exactly this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this document. I'm gonna go to File, Open, and I'm gonna go to the desktop, and I'm gonna go to the Work Files, Chapter 2, and in there you're gonna find a Pattern Pen Example Riff. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Tab to hide everything so that we can see this. This was done in the exact same way. I used the swirls pattern and I used the marker and the chalk variants of our pattern pens to create this very complex abstract style art. And this is something that you can see used an awful lot when you're looking at a lot of the Corel Painter 12 box art from Android Jones. He does a lot of work with these pattern pens and they can be really fantastic for building up texture in a way that isn't as bland as say trying to do it with brush strokes. So Certainly something to look into and try making your own pattern pens after you understand the brush settings because they're very, very, very powerful.